Good morning, good evening, and wherever the sun may find you, my name is Walt, and this is Coffee and Concepts on Keystroke Medium. Uh, this morning, helping me get my jam and coffee on, we have Angelina Singer joining us, who is author of Forgetting What I Couldn't Remember and the Upper World Series. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Walt. It's awesome Absol- to be on the show. Absolutely. You know, it's it's always fun when, like, you know, you're out in the wild and, you know, you're just perusing, kind of doing your own thing, and then you find a member of the tribe. Um, <laughs> you want to you want to talk up like how we met? It was kind of it was kind of fun. Oh, it was super wild. Um, I was at a Situate Arts Festival, and Walt walks up to me with his wife and and your mom, right? Was yeah, it was my mother in law. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm like, I just talk to everybody, you know. It's kind of like, hey, you know, here are my books, whatever. I have no idea, and we're just talking. He's like, oh, I'm the editor of Wargate Books, and I think I threw up a little, genuinely. <laughs> I think I was like, oh okay so that's a thing and i'm like try not to be an idiot try to sound like you know what you're doing yeah yeah you <laughs> had a, just... a bunch of uh really fun sounding books so we what did we talk for like 20 30 minutes yeah at least maybe like 40 minutes honestly oh, i God. really i really we just clicked and i'm like this is a guy that i really need to keep in contact so we've been kind of off and on emailing and just kind of networking and which i'm so grateful for and oh yeah um you know i'm looking forward to seeing if there's any opportunities in the future and then coming on the show was a little perk i'm like heck yeah i'll do it right so amazing it's wonderful to know you and what a blessing to make that oh thank you yeah absolutely yeah you know uh try to be nice to plan uh to everybody but always have a plan to kill everybody um what uh, (laughs) 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 uh, uh, but yeah the uh um uh, today i was thinking about uh talking uh continuing our little series on project on um the obstacles to your projects you know yes. what keeps you mm-hmm. from writing um our first episode was um basically like hey look in the mirror there's your first obstacle you know second was distractions mm-hmm. and today we have our topic but before we do that we need to get into my favorite topic which is coffee um <laughs> do you uh do you have a preferred type of coffee that you drink Honestly, anything smothered in whipped cream and syrup is usually a good start. Uh, I know it's not the healthiest, but I don't do it for caffeine. I do it like for the frappuccino, like latte vibe personally, right uh, and not regularly. Usually, it's a rare like Starbucks treat. Hang out there for an afternoon and drink something. So, right on. Yeah. So you were saying before, lattes are your jam. Yeah, specifically the pumpkin spice, which is totally like basic, I know, but I I just like them and they like come around in the fall, so I definitely have at least one every year if not more. So what do you drink in the off season? <laughs> You know, I I don't drink it often, which I know it it seems like why you're on a coffee show, but I promise you, I like it. It's just not like a routine, but I do like frappuccinos, caramel frappuccinos. I know you said your wife likes the teas and stuff, so I'll do that sometimes Chai latte is is like, you know, it's like a religion (laughs) for her. It's crazy. (laughs) Amazing. Yeah, no, I I do that kind of stuff too. So I think we're probably a lot alike, so. Right on, right (laughs) on. So let's get into, let's get into a little bit of, um, what stops people from writing because that's yeah. that's really what i wanted to what i wanted to jam on uh for the this first month uh um I, I had taken a break from the show for for just a little bit to kind of set things up and then uh uh yeah and now we're back and obstacles to writing um yep. project overload mm-hmm. are, are you guilty Oh, gosh, yeah. As a freelancer, uh, it's so tempting. Like, oh, more opportunity to network and also make some cash. Yes, I'll do it. I I, it's a disaster. I have (laughs) I like doing it, but I also have uh, staff writing positions and my own writing, which has kind of been pushed to the back burner. So I'm kind of currently trying to be like, I'll start my new book in February is my current plan. And I'll get other (laughs) stuff done these last couple of weeks is the plan. And I'm like, "Uh, can I do that? We'll see. I don't know. Right on. Yeah. So what what now? Like in the beginning? Because I know for myself, it was, yeah, give me everything. I, I want everything. <laughs> um, yes. Now it's like when when my uh, when my longtime publishing friends, uh, I've been in publishing since about 2004. Wow. Um, uh, in, another, uh, in another like enterprise, not fiction, but something uh, uh, for since t- 2004, my company has been involved in like tabletop role playing games, board games, stuff okay. like that. Yes. We do like third party production. So, hey, you need a piece of art. Yep. I'm your guy. You need uh, this particular thing laid out or, or cut a certain way. Talk to me. 
and in the beginning it was i'll take that job and that job and that job you got a job yeah no you suck stay away from me but you you all talk to <laughs> that i right? recognize i've had to fire clients before just because the scope creep is very real sometimes oh and, really uh, can you, what can you define scope creep oh sure if you, if you haven't heard that that's something that the freelancing world kind of uh whines about mutually and it's about when somebody's like you know do this for my book here's the rate okay fine go ahead do it and then they're like, ooh, but can you just do this too? Or, oh, my favorite. <laughs> can you send me back everything? Because I'm irresponsible and I lost it. And I'm like, I did this how many months ago? I don't keep everybody's crap on my laptop. No. Yeah. So it's like, you want me to resend you everything I already did? Possibly. No. Like, this is this is ridiculous. We don't, we don't do that. Like, you need to handle your stuff. I'm not your mother here. Can you just, yeah. So, so, so OMT syndrome, one more thing. Yes, one more thing without upping the pay, which yeah. upsets me. I'm like, that's not respectful of my time or effort. That's really not. So, yeah, like that. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah. What uh, what now? As you've you've been doing this a while, mm -hmm. uh, what is where is the line? Like, do you do you have do you have? I'm only going to do three projects a month, and then um, anything else will have to be on a case by case basis. Cause like nowadays, um, uh, like I was working last night until 2 AM. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it was like, yeah, you know, I, I know, um, how much I can handle. And it's like, yeah. if, if a friend comes to me and says like one of my publishing friends from back in the day mm -hmm. and says, Hey, I need this. Can you, can you help a brother out? Yeah, I got you. You know, and I'll <laughs> shave something off my free time to do that. But like, right. you know, you got other people who are like, yes, I have a um, 30 page thing that I need lay down. It's supposed to be done Tuesday. Well, what day is it? Shit, it's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. No, that sucks. Oh, I hate that. You know, so yep. do you have the line where you draw now where, where you definitively say, hey, this is good or this is not? Uh, great question. I will say I'm at a kind of a transitional uh, phase in my life right now. I just took on some staff writing gigs. I'm kind of integrating myself into some bigger like uh, company jobs, e-commerce sites. Um, there's actually a holistic healthcare center. I'm going to do some comp content writing for part time. So it's not a lot, but it'll be another thing to have to keep on doing. Right. So it's kind of like I'm transitioning into that. And once I get my feet fully into that, I'll know what I can handle on the off time. But until then, I'm kind of just doing all the things and slowly letting go of my smaller gigs to make room for the bigger stuff. And it's just kind of trial and error. So um, I was on the EFA for a while, but I left that because I had enough work outside of it. I didn't want to pay for the membership if I didn't need it. So I have one lingering client that I'm still working with from there. But other than that, I'm kind of just doing the staff writing and uh, content writing gigs. So right on. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And beyond that, um, we have uh, certain uh, titles that are out there by you, such as Forgetting What I Couldn't Remember. Yes. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about these books and possibly mm -hmm. like some of the obstacles? Yes, hard copies. <laughs> yeah, uh, look at can, that. Can you talk about these books and, and possibly talk about some of the obstacles you had to overcome in writing them? Oh, definitely. So these two books here, I'll, I'll show you the full duology here. Nice. Um, it's part one and part two, and they're time travel slash coming of age, um, you know, with some anti-bullying themes and romance in it. And, you know, these books were so hard because they came from the struggles that I had as a kid. And I, I loved having the opportunity to really dig into that and um, heal from it because I didn't really take the time to for a long time. And it was very... I was carrying it long, way longer than I really should. And I'm like, I need to handle this and move on and get better. So I, I did that and they came out really good. I'm so proud of these books. And, um, you know, they originally caught your eye cause you're the lit RPG guy, obviously. With well, no, uh, that's, you know? that's Athon books. Oh, it's uh, Athon. But, my bad. I was thinking a lot of my, yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends are, are, are getting into that genre oh, okay. and, right. and they're, they're like, they're really passionate about it. Yeah, for sure. And so because I have the time travel element and the um, and the virtual reality world in the second book, this is, can't figure out the camera, the second book here, <laughs> it's reversed, I don't know how to use this. Um, yeah, the second book here, Forgiving What I Couldn't Change, basically uh, my character Vera gets stuck in a virtual reality world because the bullies that tortured her in middle school are just out to get her and they do a lot of dumb things. And it's all about mind control, nanobots, um, crazy wolf type creatures, uh, plasma, swords, NPCs. And she has to <laughs> force her way out of it. And let's just say somebody unexpected comes to rescue her. 
in the game. And I won't tell you who. It's a major spoiler. Right but on. I will tease it just a little bit. So, yes. Right on. That's awesome. Uh, well, you. We're, now, you said that uh, you know a lot of this came from uh, your experiences in bullying. Yeah. Uh, uh, what were some of the... Uh, as that was kind of the catalyst, mm -hmm. did any of those old feelings like kind of surface and, and kind of as you were writing, kind of being like, eh, I don't know if I should write this. I can't write this. <laughs> you know what? That's a great question. It definitely old feelings came up. But I got to tell you that, you know, I changed all their names. I did what I could to be respectful. To, to protect the guilty. <laughs> yes. I love saying that to protect the guilty. I literally have said that. That's so funny. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So I did what I could to, to, you know, be civil because, you know, be the bigger person. Let's not hurt anybody with the art. Right. But right I did exaggerate them. I also protected, protected them by making them caricatures of them like as they were so any quality they had amped it up we just exaggerated they're like cartoon characters it's so funny to me um i even looked up some of their social medias to be like what do these people look like now 10 12 years later and i may or may not have used that to uh <laughs> <laughs> the characters. just a little bit occupations appearance things like that just to give a little bit of a well-rounded approach right mm. and um I definitely put myself in my middle school self and kind of did that for the younger portion for the time travel element that she's younger and she meets her younger self. Uh, I definitely put myself back in that place, which is a very psychologically taxing thing to do. If uh, you're familiar with trauma and the way memory functions, I even unlocked certain memories that I forgot about. For example, it's a little dark, but bear with me. Um, my grandmother passed away when I was nine and uh, one of the little shrimp jerk uh, bullies I was in fourth grade and he ran around knowing my grandmother was either dead or dying at the time. Grandma got run over by a reindeer in my face. Uh, oh, yes. Isn't that lovely? So uh, uh, of him. Uh, uh, Isn't that great? So I forgot about that and it came back to me I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot that was a thing that like came back and he's a police officer now. So I put him in book two <laughs> as a corrupt kind of uh, person who like, you know, uh, all being said, I, I support our, our law enforcement. I'm a big supporter of our police and the hard work they do for us. But I will say that I wrote him as a corrupt police officer because they're not all good. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, there's great ones and there's some bad ones. As it's a microcosm, just like anything else. Like when people ask it about is. the military and stuff mm -hmm. and they're like, uh, you know, um, uh, oh, everybody in the military is here. Hold on. Exactly. There's, There's good and bad. Corruption. Good there and bad. is. So in the same way people, some people feel they're all bad. I don't agree with that. But I also say, hey, they're not all good either. So we understand both sides of it, you know. Right on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fantastic that, that you use that experience to kind of not only feel your writing, but I mean, somebody else might might read this and be like, oh, my God, I'm so glad that son of a man got, got his in the <laughs> chapter, whatever. Yeah, but you know what it is? It's not even fully about the kids. It's also about the teachers because they did not handle it the way they should have. And so I called them out in the book. I mean, they weren't all bad, but it was very toxic and problematic because they punished the good kids with the bad kids, even though they were the instigators. It was very strange, very yeah. toxic. So. Yeah, and it's and it's such a tough environment now. Uh, private uh, school of all places, too. Private school is really a oh private yeah, school? private Christian school, my friend. Uh, oh yes, oh, oh yes. I yes. mean, I have friends who are like yanking their kids out of public school in droves. <laughs> this for was things private like... school. Yeah. Wow. It was, yep. It was bad. <laughs> it That's was real terrible. Bad. Tiny class teachers as hovering over you like crazy. There's no like room for anything. They're on your neck, and the kids just bother you all day. Oh yeah! At that yep. point, you gotta you gotta like grab a nun <laughs> and be like, "Look, sister, grab that ruler like a samurai sword and get over here." <laughs> yes, right. I mean, they weren't nuns, but I know what you're saying. That's really funny. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had to do we had to do catechism when I was a kid. And, no, what's and that? I don't know anything about that. So uh, Catholics um, go through their confirmation, which is mm -hmm. them confirming their baptism from back in the day, and okay. you had these classes you had to go to if you didn't go through Catholic school. Okay. Um, and it was usually like an hour once a week or something like that. But man, I had this one nun that every time I like even flinched or did something like, you know, wham, ruler across the knuckles. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, lady, I, I break boards with my hands in the afternoon for fun. Um, the only thing you're hurting there is a ruler, <laughs> you, you know? And it was just like, I love that. 
but it was you know they were so, back then they were so quick like like this is not part of the curriculum slam with that ruler and i'm like uh i was asking for a pencil sorry <laughs> wow you know yeah they were they were like they were it was like a mouse trap you know um oh which goodness. is why when you said private school i was like catholic private school or like you know religious private school i'm like oh my god yeah um, it was intense they weren't physically doing anything but i mean it was it was it was enough that they'd like you know threatened to be written up and in trouble and i'm like i'm just here because my parents made me i don't know what <laughs> your problem is um what's one of the biggest lessons you learned in writing this series oh i love that question uh, i would say when you can put a name to the things that haunted you, it becomes a lot less scary. You know, when you start to be able to say this happened, but I'm not going to let it continue to hurt me and I'm going to name it something, it becomes very small and very manageable. So I think there's really such power in art and writing and bringing the difficult things to the forefront because you get to a higher place when you're done. And then you have a really funny book that you can be like, hey, like I, I wrote them as horrible uh, sci scientific criminals that do experimental uh, um, forced experimentation on people and how funny that is. And then tasing them is really rewarding after that. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Figuratively or literally? I'll leave that up to you to figure out. <laughs> Right on. Yeah. Right on. So if uh, if people want to stalk you on the internet, not in a bullying fashion. No. Uh, but if people want to stalk you on the internet and find your products, where can they find you? Absolutely. I'm on Amazon, but also please check out my website, angelinasinger.com. You can find my book trailers, connect with me, Instagram, TikTok, email, all the things on my website. Um, and yeah, by the way, I have audio books too. So if you like to listen to books, I worked with the amazing Chelsea Quoka. She's an incredible audiobook narrator. I can't say enough about her work. She's doing an anime now. I'm like, what? What? She's crazy. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's an anime video game that she's she's really? doing, voicing a character now. It's a, uh, I think her her character's name is um, Shenha from a, it's a it's an anime. I keep forgetting the name of it, but it's it's is an she anime. Doing it in Japanese or is she doing it in English? I think it's English. I heard a sound bite of her character, but isn't that yeah. sick? I'm like, she does yeah, everything. Cool. I know. So is she part of the uh, the Voice Actors Guild of America? I believe so. Is she? I think so. I follow all her socials, but I just don't know for certain. But she's got some pretty interesting things on her resume. We'll say that. <laughs> Gotta love when that happens. I know. It's wonderful to know people that know how to do things in the industry. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing uh, just, uh, you know, morning coffee and uh, talking about obstacles. Absolutely. And, and uh, thanks for sharing up your experiences. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll definitely push some push some noise out there so people can find your books. Wonderful. Thank you, Walt, for having me. And I, I really appreciate this so much. Thanks. Absolutely. And <laughs> uh, uh, so when you got something else uh, coming out, so the next book that isn't behind an obstacle or, you know, the paid gigs, <laughs> uh, what uh, uh, can, can we have you back on again to talk up? I would love that. I think it'll take a little longer because I do have a concept I want to get a hybrid uh, deal going for. So maybe we'll be in talks. Maybe you can help me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do know some people. Ooh. Ooh, uh, wonderful. We'll be emailing. Great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes. Uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out and sharing your coffee this morning on Coffee and Concepts uh, right here on Keystroke Medium. Don't forget to go to keystrokemedium.com where you can find your own special blend of coffee. Uh, this morning, I'm actually um, uh, drinking a heavy dose of writer's block. So, <laughs> there's that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's Aww. very well priced. Very good coffee. Quality comes in a vacuum sealed, uh, a vacuum sealed bag and, and just is, is absolutely phenomenal. So, uh, please, uh, hit up boss Josh Hayes, who, uh, earlier in the morning said, Hey, -o, uh, and, uh, let him know that, uh, you grab some coffee from, uh, keystroke medium and visit us on Facebook, uh, discord, uh, Instagram, all the socials. And we'll check you next time for reading, writing, and a little bit more right here on keystroke medium. Thanks again, Angelina. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hey,